It's been nearly four months since 29 miners died in the worst mining disaster in this country in 40 years. And now some miners are telling the FBI that something criminal may have been going on. Detectors meant to protect workers from explosive methane gas may have been disabled intentionally. Here's NBC's Tom Costello. It was February 13th, two months before 29 miners died at the Upper Big Branch Mine in West Virginia, when something happened at the mine that scared Ricky Lee Campbell. What authorities say could have been criminal tampering with a methane gas detector in a mine where explosive gas has emerged as a major concern. February I witnessed an electrician bypassing a methane detector on the machines. The machines that cut coal? Yes, sir. Why would they do that? So we can continue to run coal. What's not clear is whether the gas monitor was detecting methane or was instead malfunctioning and shutting down the machinery. But Campbell says he's told the FBI that a supervisor ordered the electrician to disable it. He didn't want to do it, but he knew the danger. But when somebody above you is telling you what to do, you're going to do what they say. The mine operator, Massey Energy, says it was an isolated incident, but tells NBC News the methane monitor was bypassed in order to move the miner, the machine, from the area that did not have roof support to a safer area for repair. Not so, says Campbell. We kept using it. You kept cutting coal? Yes. Sir. Without the methane detector? Yes. Sir. Federal investigators say they've heard the allegations and, quote, if true, such actions would clearly violate the law and would jeopardize the lives and safety of the miners. The question, was there a general disregard for safety before the explosion? NPR reporter Howard Burkus has heard from multiple witnesses that disabling the monitors was common. He broke the story. People are extremely concerned about being identified as snitches. Um, one miner said to me, that the rule is what goes on underground stays underground. That miners' code of silence runs deep in much of West Virginia, where mining quite literally puts food on the table. Few jobs are as lucrative or as dangerous. The man in charge of West Virginia's independent investigation says some miners have admitted they're afraid to talk. They have expressed some concerns about intimidation, about conditions at the mine, and we've taken note of that. You were in the mine the day of the explosion. Yes, sir. Stanley Stewart worked for Massey Energy, but says he often felt too intimidated to voice safety concerns. I felt like if you would complain too much, if you rocked the boat too much, you'd probably disappear. They would just fire you. Uh, either fire you or possibly harass you. Massey Energy tells NBC News that Stewart's and Campbell's claims are without merit and it, quote, strongly forbids any improper conduct relating to any and all safety devices. We don't condone it. Uh, we discharge people for safety violations routinely. After raising safety concerns at another company mine in April, Ricky Lee Campbell was fired by Massey for allegedly unsafe behavior. He's since been hired by another mine operator and has filed a whistleblower lawsuit against Massey. His lawyer says he's now telling his story to a federal grand jury. Tom Costello, NBC News, Charleston, West Virginia. We have long had the technology to prevent these kinds of so-called mining disasters. They are not accidents I have held from the start. These things amount to industrial homicide. The criminal investigation is more than warranted.